Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Fran Phillips. I'm the Acting Health Officer here in Anne Arundel County, and I want to thank you for coming out this morning. Uh, we've had a little break in the weather. That's a good thing. Um, but what's really a good thing is the work that is continuing here in Anne Arundel County, and today, as we get started again, to have another meeting of Anne Arundel County's opioid intervention team. Uh, what you see behind me is the team itself. This is a team of partners of uh, governments across Anne Arundel County government, in agencies as well as in Annapolis City. This is our leadership. This is the team that is working, leaning forward against this fight in Anne Arundel County, this public health crisis, which is the opioid epidemic that we're experiencing here in Anne Arundel County. Not unlike other counties across the state and actually across the country. This is an epidemic that takes a toll every day on families across our county and regrettably is responsible for preventable deaths across our county. We have arrayed be behind me the team, the team that has made some remarkable progress, as you will hear later today, uh, in, in terms of moving the needle on this epidemic. We are making progress. We have a lot more uh, to do in this journey. I am honored and extremely grateful for the leadership the elected leadership in this county and in this state that is helping us get our arms around this public health crisis. We have leaders in this state, in this county, and in the city who understand the role of leadership in terms of collaboration, in terms of prevention, early intervention, treatment, and recovery against this peril. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, the key leader across the state, with regard to the opioid crisis. This is the leader, our Lieutenant Gover Governor, who has been on the ground from day one in connection with this state of emergency declared by our Governor, also declared by our County Executive. Our Lieutenant Governor has led the fight in jurisdictions around the state, uh, and I have to say not only the fight against uh, the opioid epidemic, but every emergency crisis that, uh, that arises, including yesterday morning when he was on the ground Monday morning across the bay here uh, in Queen Anne's County where uh, those communities suffered the devastation of a tornado. So our thoughts go out to the communities across the bay that have been affected and really to hold up as a remarkable example, a model to us of the kind of on the ground leadership. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, good morning. Um, as, as was just stated, uh, since day one, uh, Governor Hogan and I have been shining a light on the challenge of opioid addiction, heroin addiction in the state of Maryland and working with our local officials to make sure we try to address this, this challenge. Um, in the last two years, we put an additional over $60 million, including uh, $22 million in funding that we announced just uh, less than a month ago, I guess it was, um, to address the issue in, in multiple areas, from awareness and prevention to uh, enforcement as well as treatment. Uh, additional monies have been, most of that money, I should say, 80% of it, has been sent to the local jurisdictions across the state. Because we know, as, as Clay Stamp, who's here with me, and I should uh, mention Superintendent Pelosi from the State Police as well, as Clay Stamp also often mentions, the crisis will be addressed at the local level. It starts there, and it's going to be addressed there. We can, at the state level, provide policy and support uh, as well as resources to assist in this challenge, and we'll continue to do that. It's going to take an all-hands-on-deck approach from our federal as well as state and city and county partners to make sure we address this, communities, faith organizations, and, and all to address this particular issue. Uh, one of the, I think, the accomplishments that we have had thus far is really shining the light on this. Uh, two and a half years, maybe three years ago, when the governor and I were traveling around the state and we would talk about this issue, it was um, amazing how many people did not realize we had a heroin problem. They did not think that that was an issue in their neighborhood, their community, their kids' schools, uh, their, their neighbors. 
And now I think most people in the state realize that it is a big challenge and probably the greatest challenge from a public health as well as law enforcement challenge this country has ever had. When you look at the numbers of people who are affected by this and the numbers of fatalities associated with, with uh, heroin and opioid overdoses, it's, it's astronomical in terms of those numbers. And so we will continue to work. Um, as was mentioned, we declared a state of emergency, the first state to do that in, in March, to allow for greater coordination between the federal part or state partners and our local partners to make sure that we address this, this issue as best as possible. So with that said, um, I believe I'm turning it over to the county executive, <laughs> the birthday boy today. So thank you. Thank you for having me here today. How did he know that? Thank all of you for being here this morning. I especially want to acknowledge uh, Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford, Senior Advisor to the Governor and the leader of the statewide anti-opioid effort, Clay Stamps and Superintendent Palazzi, uh, for their efforts and for their wonderful partnership with jurisdictions around the state, most especially in Arundel County. I also want to acknowledge the fire, EMS, police, and addiction services personnel here today. They are on the front lines, and we appreciate so much everything that they do each and every day. Heroin and opioid addiction is a challenge across our state, and Anne Arundel County is no exception. In fact, Anne Arundel County is a case study for this uh, incredible uh, public health crisis and is among the worst hit in the state. When I came into office three years ago, we were experiencing a fatality a week and an overdose a day, okay? That was enough for us to declare a public health emergency related to heroin, and we formed the Heroin Action Task Force to develop recommendations drawing on best practices from all around the country. That group came up with 35 different recommendations, each and every one of which has been implemented. Those recommendations fell into three broad categories, enforcement, treatment, and education. In terms of enforcement, we doubled the number of the police department's drug diversion squad personnel. We provided funding for a heroin prosecutor in the state's attorney's office, and we're prioritizing heroin-related warrants in the sheriff's office. With respect to treatment, Actions designed to expand and improve treatment options include investing $800,000 in a new substance abuse treatment center in Annapolis, increasing community grants for providers of addiction services by 25%, doubling the budget for Narcan, offering Vivitrol treatments in our detention centers, and assisting in the operation of overdose survivors outreach program at Baltimore Washington Medical Center. And finally, educational initiatives have included hosting Not My Child forums across the county at community associations, neighborhood groups, and schools. Our program and our video uh, have won national awards. If you've not seen Not My Child, go to YouTube, type in Not My Child, the video will come up. It will make your hair stand on end. We're also working with the school system to incorporate drug education into the curriculum. So we're doing a lot of things. But despite all these innovative solutions and investments and a lot of hard work by a lot of people, the problem is getting worse. By mid-year this year, we were experiencing not one, but three overdoses a day. Not one fatality a week, but 2.5. So the problem is up somewhere between 250 and 300%. That told us we had more to do and we had to innovate. And that's why in April, we kicked off the Safe Stations program here in Anne Arundel County. This is a new approach to assuring that those in crisis get the help that they need when they need it. Here's how it works. Each Anne Arundel County and Annapolis City Fire Station has been designated a safe place for individuals seeking assistance to start their path to recovery from opioid addiction. After an initial medical evaluation upon arrival, our crisis response team will connect sufferers to the services they need to help them on, this, on their road to recovery. This is great news. In the 100 days since we started that program, we have helped nearly 100 people get connected to services. 100 people have presented themselves. It's great news, yes.
In fact, we've had so many people seek help that our crisis response team has become overwhelmed. But today, thanks to the state's leadership, the crisis response team will be getting some much needed help in the form of a state grant. I'm pleased to announce that most of these funds will be used to expand the Safe Stations program by targeting $200,000 to our crisis response team. These critically important funds will enhance their capabilities and enable them to respond more quickly to our citizens in distress. In fact, these funds are enough to hire one complete new crisis response team to respond to the needs of our citizens. The remaining funds from the state grant will be used to expand our education and outreach efforts, similar to our recent Denial is Deadly public service announcement campaign. I believe this expansion of both our safe stations and public outreach efforts, combined with our ongoing efforts, will continue to make Anne Arundel County a state and national model for overcoming this horrific epidemic. So thank you for, again for being here. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, my partner here in Anne Arundel County, the mayor of the great city of Annapolis, Mike Pantelides. Thank you. Good morning. First of all, let me say thank you all for coming here and how incredibly proud I am to be part of this wonderful team. The people we have lined up behind us represent all areas of what it's going to take to fix the heroin and opioid problem in Anne Arundel County and in the state of Maryland. We've had somewhat of a paradigm shift in how we tackle this problem. It's not just a lock em up mentality. Behind us, you see people from the detention center. You see people from our school systems, from the hospital, police, fire, social services, everyone coming together because the problem that we face in front of us affects everybody in the city of Annapolis. I'd like to personally thank Governor Hogan, Lieutenant, Gov Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford for their leadership in tackling this program. As they mentioned earlier, they were the first people in the entire country to declare a state of emergency. And that's the leadership it's going to take to help us solve this problem. I want to thank one of my biggest partners, County Executive Steve Shu. He highlighted the many successes we've had in our Safe Streets program. We had 15 people alone come to the city of Annapolis for help. That's 15 people that had a problem, wanted help, came to either a police or fire station, and are now on the path towards recovery. I also want to thank the Lieutenant Governor for the money that they're putting towards that'll help our crisis response team going forward. These are the people on the front line that are dealing with this problem every single day. Looking ahead, I want to invite everyone to our Break the Silence uh, by attending the upcoming Opioid Intervention Workshop on September 13th at the Byzantium in Annapolis. One of the things we're doing is engaging with our faith-based community. We're bringing people from all organizations to identify, educate, and communicate information about the heroin uh, epidemic in this county. I want to thank everyone again for coming behind us. It's truly a great day when you can see all areas, gov all areas of government coming together to work for you. So thank you all so much and God bless.